Saturday evening on Capital Radio, this is From Small Beginnings with Richard Allinson. We're charting the progress of a song from its original demonstration stages to final chart success. Cast your mind back to the summer of 1980. Babushka from Kate Bush. And it's with a fair degree of amusement that Kate Bush recalls the first demo tape she sent off to record companies in search of that all-important contract. The tape amazingly contained 50 songs. Each song is just me and the piano, and uh, these would be sent off to record companies. And of course, uh, someone who doesn't know me or know the lyrics or anything would just be listening to 50 continuous songs of the same kind of sound, which was something I didn't realise at all. Um, and it wasn't until it was pointed out to us that, in fact, it's a much better idea to just put two or three songs on the tape because people will take it in a lot better and won't be stunned by the amount of material. doesn't sound much like a Kate Bush record at all, but that was it. Somewhere amongst those 50 songs, it was there, the original demo recording of Don't Push Your Foot on the Heartbreak. And that subsequently appeared on Kate's second album, Lionheart. The first album, The Kick Inside, had already established the London teenager as a major new songwriting and performing force. She attributes the success of both albums to the quality of the people surrounding her in the studio, namely producer Andy Powell and the selection of session musicians who'd played with other big-name artists. So I was really lucky to have an incredible crew around me. And uh, I think it does make a big effect on you, the people you first work with in the studio. I think it's, it means a lot to the respect that you have for the rest of your life. If you're working with people who don't respect the studio or the music, I'm sure you would be that way too. But I was working with people who respected everything and worked very late hours. So right from the start, there was no way I could go home at 8 o'clock in the evening. I was there till 2 or 3 in the morning. And I realised then that it was a very big, involved process. It wasn't all the bed of roses, though. After the initial satisfaction of recording her own album had sunk in, Kate found herself thinking more about the production techniques and the sounds that she could make. She wanted to be the director and not to be directed, and the working relationship with producer Powell became strained. Quite early on, I began to realise that perhaps there were things that I would have done differently or I would have liked to have heard slightly different things coming out than were coming out. But um, Andrew really, I think, did an incredible job considering what he was working with. He was working with a completely unknown artist. But nonetheless, I was aware that there was something missing that wouldn't have been if I had been producing. But obviously, I didn't know anything about it. And on the first album, I don't think it even occurred to me that I would have wanted to produce because I had so much to learn. The crunch came with the Lionheart album, and particularly the track entitled Don't Push Your Foot on the Heartbreak. The demo you've been hearing was recorded at Kate's home on an eight-track tape machine, which is a slightly more sophisticated version of the one you've probably got at home. Kate used her own band for the recording. The lineup was Charlie Morgan on drums with Dale Palmer on bass, guitarist Brian Bath, and her brother Paddy Bush on harmonica. She felt, however, that the demo had a naive energy and rawness that wasn't captured on the final record. Unfortunately, because of the, the time being so um, tied up in lots of other things, there wasn't really as much concentration going into the album as perhaps there should have been. And uh, when we actually came to record the track, uh, there were several other musicians actually playing. And in a way, I felt that a lot of the raw energy, which for me is really what a lot of rock is about, actually didn't get onto disc, which was a shame, I felt.
And I think also if you are an artist, again, who's young and if you're a female, a lot of what you say, especially in your early years, are not taken very seriously. And so perhaps a lot of the points that I would have liked to have pushed, that I would push all the way now, I would have maybe just suggested then and would have been uh, told that it wouldn't work and so I wouldn't push it. But now I would push it all the way, um, which is really the way I am. And I think because things were, perhaps because I was changing too on that album, um, I realised that the next one would have to be different and I would have to take a lot more uh, control of it to make sure it was the way I wanted it to be. what she means about the lack of raw energy on the finished product uh, compared with the original demo recording of Don't Push Your Foot on the Heartbreak. As Kate says, uh, she was changing and things did change dramatically in the preparation for her third album, Never Forever, where Kate had previously played her songs in the studio to musicians who then took notes and jotted down chords. She now demanded more preparation. She bought a synthesizer and a rhythm box and worked solidly on demos at home. The rhythm box would give her a beat to work to, and the synthesizer would add the colours, while the piano and the vocals took care of the melody. To illustrate this approach, we've chosen demos of the hit singles Babushka and Sat in Your Lap from the soon-to-be-released album called The Dreaming. Listen for the simplicity of the first Babushka demo, which features Kate on piano and vocals. She wanted to text her husband She knew exactly what to do was really a song I think that when I started writing I thought would very possibly be a single 
that doesn't happen very often but um, in a way I think I was almost trying to design the song to be an obvious construction and uh, therefore hopefully an obvious single. Obviously, but one demo wasn't enough and so she recorded a second demo of Babushka at home to develop the themes. And then Kate went into Abbey Road Studio number two, that's the one where the Beatles recorded, and she put down the final version. With her went Stuart Elliott on drums, John Giblin on bass, and engineer John Kelly, who'd worked on Kate's previous sessions and was now called upon to co-produce and translate the sounds that Kate heard into her head into the interpretation of sounds onto the tape.